Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3. Uh, statistically, if you made it this far, uh, you're doing very well. Uh, um, if you look at any long form tutorial series on YouTube, there is always a big drop off after episode 1. Anything that, you know, any series with a lot of views, there's always a big drop off after episode 1. Um, another big drop off after episode 2. And smaller and smaller drop off because by the time you get to like four or five, you know, most of the people there are, uh, are going to stick around till the end. So um, if you've got this far, uh, the things look pretty good for you statistically. So well done. This week, uh, we are going to be looking at collisions. Okay. And we're going to add just as we did things a little bit differently with our animation, um, we're going to do things slightly differently with our collisions. Um, we are going to use a tile collision system this time around. Um, I know I've sung the benefits of doing tile-based collision before in the past, but I I will say that it's arguable, depending on the type of game you're doing, whether there really is that much benefit to doing like a tile-based system over an object-based system. But I've never shown how to do a tile-based system in a game before, uh, in like in a uh, a full project anyway. Um, so. Uh, I, I thought it would be good to to cover that in this series. We're actually going to do a combination of both for colliding with different things. Um, but since the bulk of what we're going to be colliding with in the game is just like our background scenery, like um, our walls and houses and uh, rocks and stuff like that, um, things that are static and unchanging in the environment, uh, I think it makes a decent amount of sense to use a tile-based system. And we're... For our player, our player is only going to collide with these tiles based on a single pixel, just that bottom, just their origin point. Just this point here is basically going to be what our player is to the game world in terms of the, the tiles that we place. Um, we'll use the collision mask that we created for colliding with other entities and things like that that are more specific and um, make more sense, I think, to work as collisions between different objects and instances, because there'll be less of them to actually calculate the collisions between. And for the rest of the world, we're just going to use a super fast system um, to check the collisions between just a single point on our feet, um, or our, our bottom center of our player, and um, a, a tile grid. Okay, just uh, just makes things super cheap, super efficient, um, and easy to look after. So we're going to get started as we usually do by adding a sprite of some kind. Uh, it seems to be how we start a lot of our episodes. So I'm just going to close everything down, and um, I'm going to press Alt S and bring in a new sprite. I'm going to call it uh, S Col. Okay, Col being short for collision, and I just do that because I get sick of writing the word collision over and over again. So I just call it Col. Uh, going to go to import. We've got our um, our assets here, I'm going to pick scol.png if you're using the, the assets available with this series. Um, it's really not that much, I could have just made a new one really. 32 by 32 sprite, uh, split into like 16 by 16 squares with just a 16 by 16 uh, transparent red uh, um, square in the top, layer, top right corner. Uh, it's exactly 16 pixels though, like this here. Um, you can see like selection, uh, you can see like uh, the bottom, bottom there, selection area 16 by 16, okay? Um, so make sure it is because we're going to split this into a tile set. I didn't actually need the space down the bottom here, but I, I thought it helped just for the sake of clarity, okay? So you can you can recreate something like this very quickly if you want to. It's, it's really not that difficult. Oh, you can turn this grid on as well up here to help you with stuff like this when you're making tile sets. Um, and set the grid size to be whatever you want, set the color to be whatever you want, and so on. That's quite handy as well. But as you can see, up here, in the top right, 16 by 16 square. Um, you might be wondering why have I done this in the top right of a little grid? Why why isn't it just a single sprite by itself? Um, when you make, well, rather than explain it now, I'll just I'll show you. I'm going to make a tile set next. Okay, so I'm going to go to tile sets, right click, hit create tile set, or just create in a myriad of different ways that you can use the interface to create a tile set. However you want, you'll end up with this. And I'm going to call it T Col. Okay, and in sprite, I'm going to assign the sprite to S Col. Okay, and I'm just going to use I'm just using the middle mouse to drag around this, and then Control and the mouse wheel just to zoom right in. Or you can press this as well. Uh, oh, okay, I thought that would zoom to fit. Uh, on a center fit, that's the one I want. There we go. Um, just to zoom in on it, and you'll notice like uh, it's split into three here. I don't know if this is the default or if I've changed the default. It might be on something like 32 by 32. If it is, just make sure tile width and tile height are 16. 
and I 16 and you'll see this grid appear and you'll notice that there is no square on the top left and whenever you make a tile set it is important to leave a tile blank in the top left of the image okay that you're going to split into tiles and this is why I couldn't just make this a 16 by 16 square because um, you need the first tile of whatever your tile set is to be blank um, I don't know all the specifics of why, it's just it's um, an internal thing to do with how tiles are handled um, and they, they, they use this space to store some information, I think, I, about it. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it needs to be blank, okay? It needs to be blank and transparent. Um, or rather, it doesn't actually, like, you can put stuff in here um, if you want, it just, um, it won't matter. Like, that's not a valid tile, okay? So when we actually come to place it, placing this tile around the tile set around our room editor, we won't be able to place this tile, so you may as well leave it blank because it's it's not going to do anything. Okay, so just make sure all your, the tiles that you actually want to use are not in the top left. Um, as I say, I could have made it this this size or whatever, right? I didn't need these two at the bottom, I just thought that helped make it, I don't know, I just thought it was clearer somehow, <laughs> all right? Don't judge me. All right, so this is our tile set, and all we're going to use it for is to mark which areas of the game world we want to be collidable and which areas we don't. We haven't actually brought in any of our background art yet, but it's all going to be 16 by 16 um, tiles, okay? Um, so let's just, just mark that out very easily. So um, if we come to room zero now, I'm just going to zoom out a bit there with control mouse wheel. And in the layers over here, I'm going to add a tile layer, okay? Let's just like, split into a little grid icon with create new tile layer as its tooltip. Click that. We'll get a new layer. I'm gonna click it, press F2, just to rename it. Um, call. Okay, just we'll have a layer called call, and it's just gonna be the same layer that we use in every room, just to define our collidable areas. Where it says no tile set here in layer properties, click that. Select T call to assign the um, the tile set that we want to use, and you can see it's automatically adjusted to give us a 16 by 16 grid. Now, assuming you have grid turned on in the room editor, and we've got this tile. Um, library, selector, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see in the top left, this, we've got this weird checkerboard one here. That's just like a, a null sprite, right? So that's, I say, I, you can't can't use the top left of a tile set. Anyway, so click our uh, red um, transparent rectangle. And just I'm just going to draw a, I don't know, a world, I guess. Um, Eventually we'll make this layer invisible when we actually bring in some of our background art, but for now just, just paint some stuff around the place, okay, or whatever you want, just so we have a world to walk around and we can test that the collisions are working. Alright, so with that in place, let's get to work actually making this work. <laughs> um, so go ahead and close room zero, come to O player, go to the uh, create event, and right at the top here, I'm going to put a line in to get the ID of that layer, okay, because uh, we're going to need it. I'm going to type collision map equals layer underscore tile map underscore get underscore ID. Okay, and basically that's going to reach into a particular layer that we have in the room and find the ID of the tile map that is on that layer, assuming there is a tile map on that particular layer. Um, but to do that, we need to give it um, a layer ID, first of all. Um, ju just to be clear here, I'm, I'm talking, there's a layer, call, and then the tile map on that layer. We're trying to get the ID of the tile map. So we need to, first of all, tell it which layer we're trying to find the tile map of. That's what I'm doing. So, uh, inside the bracket for layer, tile map, get ID, I want to type layer, get ID, open bracket, uh, quotation mark, call, quotation mark, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. All right, that's the full line. Um, we just provide the name in, uh, in a, as a string here, call um, into layer get ID. That provides the ID of the layer we're looking for. And then we, uh, we find the tile map on that layer and we store it in collision map. And then that's what we're going to check against when we're looking for collisions. Um, let's maximize this. We're going to be working with a bunch of code. So um, maximize that right click, go to add slash open event, go back to our step event, where we have all of our lovely growing week by week um, logic for our player. And get rid of this section, the 
here. Okay, this is where we were committing to our movement. All right, so we'd worked out our inputs, we'd worked out, we'd calculate where we want to move, and then we actually committed to the movement. Select that, our x plus hp and y plus b speed, just delete it. Um, because what we are going to do with our collision, and you'll remember this kind of logic if you've done my platformer series or anything like that, is we're going to look for a collision on a horizontal axis and then commit to whatever horizontal movement we want to do as a result of that. Then check our vertical axis and then move if we still want to move on that axis. Okay. Um, so we're going to be doing the collisions before each particular movement commitment, if you will. So what I'm going to replace that with is a player collision uh, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and um, that'll stay gray. Uh, might even yeah provide an error or whatever um, because we're just going to put a script here, just as we did with player animate sprite. Uh, we're going to make a script called player collision, uh, and that's going to handle our collision and our movement. Um, the reason I'm putting this in the script is uh, eventually we're going to make a state machine, and um, don't worry if you don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but eventually we're going to need to reuse this code in various places and it helps to not have to copy and paste it. So we're going to put it in a script. So right click in scripts, hit create script um, and make sure you name it exactly the same. Otherwise, obviously your code won't work. So player collision. Um, if I then save that, come back to here or if I reopen that, eventually it will. Yeah, it'll eventually turn <laughs> yellow again. Uh, so get that script up. And with that script up, the first thing we want to put in it is our var underscore collision equal false. Um, again, this is something we're not going to use right away, but eventually um, some of our different states and other uses of this script might want to return whether or not there was a collision and to do something about it. Um, it won't matter for our basic moving around because it's just going to affect our movement speed that we're going to do in here. Um, but it might matter later on um, in a future episode. So just get that in for now. Um, in fact, at the bottom of the code, we're going to write return underscore collision. Okay, and then all of our code's going to be in the middle here to basically determine whether or not there was a collision. And then the script will send back whether or not there was a collision. As I said, not important um, for this episode, but will be important later. So get it in now. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is check our horizontal axis. Um, I'm going to make a comment, uh, horizontal tiles. Okay. Uh, to distinguish from horizontal entities that we'll do later as a different type of collision check, but just checking our tile map. First of all, uh, if open bracket tile map underscore get underscore at underscore pixel, open bracket uh, collision map uh, that's the variable we stored the tile map ID in earlier then we just want to provide the coordinates of a particular pixel and we're going to check that pixel on this tile map to see uh, what tile is there okay so x um, plus h speed that's the position we are about to move to right uh, and y is just y uh, close bracket close bracket now this will actually return um, a bunch of info. Um, if you've done things like uh, add blends and rotates and stuff to your tiles, um, then doing this won't be enough. You'll have to then go ahead and get like a tile map get index from this data or, or something like that. I can't remember the specifics. But since our tile map is, is very, very simple and all we're doing is just placing uh, this one tile around the room. Basically, the, the data we're going to get back is either going to be zero for no tile or one for tile one. If we were using like tiles two and three and so on and so forth, um, then obviously there'd be more data like you could get a tile, you get you're basically getting the tile index back, right? But for us in this situation, we're either getting zero, which is no tile, or we're getting one, right? Um, which is very handy because then that means um, we can just do an if with this and it's getting back a zero or a one, which is equivalent to a true or a false. So if this comes back as one, then we know we've hit a red tile. Uh, and if it comes back as zero, then we, we haven't hit any tile, okay? So we know there's going to be a, whether or not there's a collision where we want to move horizontally. Um, so assuming there is, assuming there is a collision where we want to move horizontally, uh, what do we do in here as a result? We do x minus equal x mod 
16, uh, which is the size of our tiles. In fact, I am going to make that a macro. So I'm going to write tile underscore size in all caps and go to macros and type hash macro tile underscore size 16. Okay, that'll turn red whenever game maker, there we go, <laughs> whenever game maker feels like it. Um, because that's that's going to be consistent, and if we ever want to change it, we can just change it there. So come back to our script now. So what does this line do? So for those of you who don't know, what mod does is it returns the remainder of a attempted division into whole numbers, right? So we're going to take x, um, see how many times tile size goes into it, and return whatever's left over. So if this, uh, since tile size is 16, if our x was 18. Um, 16 goes into 18 once with two left over, right? So it would return two. Um, what that basically means is it's going to put us at the um, the very left of whatever tile we're currently in, which makes sense if we are running to the left and we're about to hit a wall. Uh, we're on like um, pixel two of this particular uh, tile in the grid here. Say so we're trying to move into this one. Uh, we don't want to, so we're going to move to the far left of this tile. But you might be thinking, well, what if we're moving to the right? Um, we want to move to the far right of this tile. Uh, and that's true. So what we want to do is say if um, sign, uh, not, not sign, sign, uh, open bracket, h speed, close bracket, equals 1, close bracket again. Um, so if our h speed is positive, then we want to move to the far right of the tile instead. Okay, uh, but that's very easy to do. It doesn't matter that we've done this uh, ahead of time anyway. We've just we've done that, so we're at the far left of the tile uh, regardless. But if we were moving to the right, we want to be at the far right of the tile. So x plus equal tile size minus one. Okay, um, so if we want to be so. We've already moved ourselves to pixel zero or, or, or pixel one rather of the of the tile. So we want to move to the very far right. If we add a tile size entirely, we'd move to the first pixel of the next tile. Okay, so we want to move that amount minus one. We want to move 15 pixels to the right after moving to the far left of the tile. Uh, we're just going to move all the way to the far right. Okay, um, so that guarantees us that we'll be on the um, the, the very border of the tile. Okay, it's, it's very handy because it's just super quick maths. Um, let's us just snap to the appropriate position. Whereas if we were colliding with objects, um, as you might remember from the platformer, we have to kind of do like a while loop and check every single pixel along the way and move as close as possible to it. But since we know exactly where our collisions will take place along a fixed grid, um, we can do very quick maths by dividing with uh, the size of the uh, the size of the tile to position ourselves perfectly. It's one of the biggest advantages of doing a tile map collision system. Uh, after that, we obviously want to reduce our horizontal speed to zero, so we don't want to move anywhere else this frame. So h speed equals zero, and set our collision to be true, because we know we found a collision. So collision equals true. Um, then, once we've done that, so we've checked if there's a collision. If there is, snap to the correct side of the, the tile that we're on, um, set our speed to be zero so we don't move into the next tile, set collision to be true so we'll return true at the end of the script. Okay, that's everything we actually need to do as part of colliding horizontally with tiles. All we need to do um, once we've done that collision stuff is uh, commit to our actual horizontal movement. So open uh, a comment here and write horizontal move commit. And then just replace that line we got rid of earlier, x plus equal h speed. And we're going to do the exact same thing underneath. So just select all this, copy, paste, um, scroll to the bottom, make sure we don't accidentally change any of the above stuff. Uh, change this to vertical tiles. Uh, change this to vertical move commit. Uh, remove the plus h speed from the end of x here and put plus v speed on the end of the y here. Don't just change it around. Let's common mistake that leads to a lot of problems, make sure you put it on the y. Um, change x minus equal x mod tile size to be y minus equal y mod tile size. Okay, so that's going to put us at the very top of a frame. Uh, if sign h speed equals 1, no, if sign v speed uh, equals 1, uh, then y plus equal tile size minus 1. v speed equals 0, collision, oops, v speed equals zero, collision equal true. 
and the vertical move commit is just v plus equal v speed. So we just swap all those variables around. The only one you need to be careful of is up here because like it can be easy if you're just swapping the y, uh, the x's to y's and so on um, to just to just do that up here. But you need to make sure you move it across from being where we put the x coordinate here at x plus h speed to being at the far end y plus v speed here. Okay, just be careful with that one. Then all we need to do is come back to our player step event. Um, I think I closed that a while ago, but here we go. Uh, come back to your player step event. And oh, I was going to say put player collision in, but we already did that earlier. It's there waiting for us. That's everything then. That's everything we need to do. So I'm just going to press Control S just to save the game and press F5 to run. And oh, what did I screw up? Uh, variable O player dot V not set before reading it. Yep, uh, V is definitely not a variable we want to use. Some of you will have spotted this in the video already, but we make these mistakes. You know, mistakes happen. Um, it's good to show what will happen if you make a mistake. So come back to player collision. And let's find where did, oh, I should have looked in the air to see where I actually made that mistake, uh, but it, I can see now it's here. Vertical move commit. It's not V plus V speed. <laughs> it's obviously Y plus equal V speed. Okay. Um, mistakes happen. Okay, so let's uh, save that. Try running that again. Here we are, running around the world, and if I run into the walls, I run into them. Cool. Uh, you can see I'm kind of behind the wall at the moment. I guess we can quickly fix that. If I come to the room editor, just drag call to be underneath the instances. It eventually, it's going to be invisible anyway, but um, just for now, just so you can kind of see how that works. You can see using, it's, it's just based on this one pixel that's our bottom center, allowing us to collide with these walls, while also just sort of appearing in front of them, you know, with our sort of three quarters top down perspective and it works pretty flawlessly and pixel perfect like it, it's really easy to do this kind of collision system when you're just working with one pixel and a, a tile map it's super cheap super efficient um, you could argue because we're only using fairly small rooms throughout this project um, you know you're, you're not going to run into a huge cost problem by using um, objects and entities for collisions if you prefer to do it that way but i thought it was good to show off how you can very very easily write a tile uh, collision system for a game like this and uh yeah we're gonna stick with it thanks everybody hope you enjoyed part three remember if you want to get your hands on the source code there's a link in the description that will show you how you how to do that um you could also while you're in the video description you could go visit my patreon that's who all these cool people are. They're the cool people from my Patreon who help me do what I do every week. Special shout outs in particular to these particular patrons in no particular order. Army Armbuster, Arrow Barbarian, Bailey Raid, Bowser the Dog, Bertie T, Cabbage Pants, Daka Dondigo, Dark Rider 0318, Do What Doobie, Frederick Habetler, Gargoyle Drake, Hanu Kusi, Hair, Hyungjin, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Jason, Christopher King, Leo, Maria Celeste de Oliveira Frailing, Max M, Nathan Wilson, Owen Morgan, Pixel Mush, Relentless Rex, Rene Dam, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Run, Rupinder, Schaefer, Scott Matthews, Samir Nyayalegaglo, Stephen Hagen, T. Lesson, Travis Womack, Tyler Hubble, Victor Stewart, Ville Vertinen, Zephyr Flame, Zenan May. Thank you all ever so much and thank you for watching. Cheers guys, catch you all next time.